Uh, Dirtbag Firefox wanted to do an update just as I was going to go live. I tries to do an update. Unbelievable. Such is life. We had to change uh, the settings. Uh, so I'm not sure what the quality is going to look like. I'm just going to hang on for a second. I should pop up on this other computer. Hi everybody. I'll just keep talking while I'm waiting. I can't see the TEPCO logo to the Gamma Haze. There's some funny stuff in the comment section. I have to go take a TEPCO. Uh, uh. I hope this thing is stringing. If toilet paper was TEPCO logos on it, everybody would walk funny. Everybody would walk funny. So let's see my video. Oh, there is a video of me. Just hang on a second. Sweet. So it's okay. That's pretty cool. That's good news. Hang on. I scroll down. I had to drop the quality. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. It didn't look good on the settings, but it stabilized, and I don't have to sit here for two hours. Not that it's super high quality anyway, but. Uh, back to that piece of. Shouldn't we be calling them Death Co. by now? I think that was Annie. If men's. blah. We're labeled Tepco to be no need for birth control. Oh. <laughs> Miss Milky, the joke got past me though. Two skeleton Tepco guys walk into a bar. One says I'll have the beer, a beer. The other says I'll take a mop. That actually took like 30 seconds for it <laughs> to sink in. I copied it in the paste and I was like, I don't know, what the hell. <laughs> Yepco. <laughs> Yakusu Electric Company. And because I was like at the last minute doing this, I forgot to grab everybody's names. I was just grabbing the comments for some reason. I didn't grab the names. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dana. You have to go to the comments section and find the funny people yourselves. I probably missed a whole bunch. I'm keeping you up late, am I? Steven? No one's nodding more. Standing afoot. Uh, you know, Tepco has a live webcam, but you're not allowed to take pictures. It's like the TSA says they got to grope your children, and there's thousands of miles of open border. The pro-nuclear PR firms and their lobbyists and media pundits has as much as credibility as a sting nettle bush does to a drowning victim. And the brain of the pro-nuclear apologist explaining Fukushima away as fear-mongering. In the same mouthful of venom belaying the ocean is full of natural uranium to pacify anybody that's inquisitive. They're already hypnotized by that TV set, you know. It's at the same frequency as their brain. It's meant to lull them into a, a vulnerable vegetable state. You ever see a kid in front of the TV and they're drooling, you're yelling at them, they can't hear you? They're actually in that... Uh, because it, uh, the frequency is the same frequency as your brain. And it causes the victims that are watching it to regurgitate the media's frequency brain uploads. At coffee shops and lunchrooms and laundry mats and wherever people gather. Yes, uranium is natural to oceans. Of course it is. It's indigenous to everything on Earth. Um... But the man and woman made uranium and plutonium is a whole different creature. Bananas have natural insignificant radiation. Um, so do rocks. When you walk down the street, you get insignificant background radiation. This is true. Uh, but because you use harsh chemicals on your body, you lose protection from natural human oils. And so you might get some sunburns. Everything you eat and touch on Earth has background radiation. Everything. Uh, this is true. Hi, Zoe. Everything on this planet, though, is acclimated to that natural radiation. 
and you cannot avoid it and you're not supposed to it doesn't belong in this equation go look up m equals nc square and tell me where does it say uh, one banana and two rocks into that equation um, you can't make a weapon using natural radiation you can take a bathtub of ocean water uh, with natural uranium in it every day of your life and you will never get cancer it has nothing to do whatsoever with enriched uraniums like 234 or 235 and certainly nothing to do with uranium 238 if you took a glass of yellow cake uh, uranium 238 left over from production of enrichment of uranium 234 and 235 and put it in a bathtub of fresh ocean water with natural radiation and trillions of microscopic animals living in harmony it will kill those critters in a nanosecond it will kill you in a few seconds also but don't worry that won't happen because when you walk in the room your organs will melt and you'll die anyway because you're in proximity to those neutrons and x-rays it it'll kill you in a few seconds anyway that's nothing though it doesn't stop there people can walk into that room all day and die for 4.5 billion years times 10 because radiation breaks down into another radioactive odious named daughter by the way the ocean is a soup of life if you go anywhere in any ocean normally and randomly take a tiny uh, drop of the ocean water and put it under a microscope you will see millions of sea creatures and you can take a bathtub of that sea water with trillions of microscopic organisms in it and a single isotope of uranium-234, 235 or 238 uh, you know one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter and it'll kill all the life in that bathtub and if you were to empty that bathtub and fill it up every hour or every day with fresh ocean water full of trillions of critters and put that same isotope back into that bathtub you'll kill all those sea creatures for 4.5 billion, billion years and it's time 10 so 45 billion years so you know for 90 days we have told you these big numbers huge massive incredible inconceivable numbers and they don't stop right they tell you about cesium but there's 30 times more strontium they tell you it's iodine 131 they found in your community up to 20 million a liter disintegrations per second can your mind even comprehend that your body can't sustain that if you try to drink it because every second there's 20 million uh, Beckwell's and a Beckwell imagine 20 million grains of sand popping inside of your body think of it that way it can flip a grain of sand over that's how much energy it's got at 270,000 miles an hour and it's just radiating out that energy in a single liter of rainwater now I want you to think about how the rain works it's not just a liter that falls out of the sky right and that's why the Philippines was so intense and that's why the Tonga cyclones were so intense um, because every second a liter of that rainwater can easily be popping out a lot more energy in that per liter of the rainwater at 270,000 miles an hour these little you know how you're on a skateboard and you put your foot down and you push yourself along when you're on a skateboard right and you're pushing yourself along one foot's up here and you're pushing and you can get some pretty big speeds going some serious speeds going if you know what you're doing you got your technique well, this thing got its technique and it knows what it's doing. Better than the best skateboarder on the planet. More effectively, more relentlessly. It's not a joke. It's not a game. It's the real thing. And what happened to the Philippines uh, will come to other Pacific Rim nations and countries and impoverished islands like Tonga, where they don't even get a mention. 
and some of the fastest land speeds for a cyclone ever recorded, and they don't even get a fucking mention. And the media is not complicit. They just read whatever's in front of them. That's what they do all day. They cake their face with toxic waste, and they sit there and smile and sell it. That the other betrayal. For a Twitter account, for some fame, for some notoriety, for maybe just emptiness, I guess. There can't be any fulfillment in what they do. How can that be fulfillment knowing you have to know at some point? Well, TEPCO has unleashed this creature up on us. It doesn't have enough money to support itself. It's actually 50% of the shares are owned by the Japanese government. They call it, they're calling all the shots. After they get the okay from the Yakuza's and the Americans. Um, and this is a, a very unusual scenario here where we've never killed an ocean before, ever. Uh, the global warming, of course, is the, the disguise to bury all of this over the last 70 years, the last 50 years, the intensity of it. I mean, there's like, you can go down to Russia in the late 40s and you evacuated 7,500 communities. Look what they've done around Chernobyl, 3,600 square miles. In the late 40s, 9,000 square miles. Ten years, ten years later, another 1,000 square miles when the tanks detonated. Right, because of all that americium, neptunium, uranium, plutonium sitting on the bottom of the tanks and the yellow cake. And, you know, TEPCO is out there funding university, MIT professors, nuclear professors. So it's just, a, a, it, you never get the actual experts from all the major institutions. You get experts in something else speaking out from those institutions, maybe. That's how tight it is. It's the brotherhood. And see, a lobbyist shouldn't exist. That's what these people are, in our institutions. All nuclear professors and scientists are lobbyists by nature, by proxy, by the very definition of the word lobbyist. They can't get that tenor without being the lobbyist. They have to be pro-nuclear. Pro everything nuclear. And there's two million uses for her that have been incorporated into our lives against our wills, against our knowledge, against our the better judgment of a lot of people, but with an agenda, with a hideous agenda, just because it's so bad for the human race. Those days are over now of this control grid as this melts down in society. I mean, 65,000 TSA is going to stop people if they lose it 300 million handguns you got any idea how ridiculous that is you got any idea it's a thousand to one anyway no matter what country you're looking at when people finally snap it's a thousand to one and people in japan right now the citizens are ready to snap on tepco and their own citizens there's no doubt about it it's coming that way now to canada and the united states as they're waking up People are getting really upset. I'm seeing it in my own personal life at an accelerated rate now. There's nothing can contain it if it gets out of hand. And this is all because of Japan and the TEPCO, the corporation, the corporate personhood. <coughs> corporate personhood. Uh, and this could be dealt with. There's 4,800 peer review academic studies every day. That's finished, and they're ready to go again. If you can get 100 of them working on Fukushima, on ways to deal with it, on new technology, new applications, is there any other way we could do this? Does anybody have any other kind of concept of how we can actually pull this off? How we can save most of the species on the planet, let alone the humans? What are we going to do with what's left of the Pacific? Once again, an isotope will kill everything in that bad tub. All the little sea creatures. Like on, in a microscope, any drop of water out of the ocean is full of life. I have to keep repeating this. Because this is about people that don't know any better every day and are searching this out. Anybody who's been here for a while 
uh, you're good to go anyway. But you're, you know, this is a, it's a bit of a community here, I guess, is the better way to put it. But these shows are about having a live forum, something somebody, everybody can identify with every day, so that when people wake up today and tomorrow and yesterday, they had an opportunity to find something like this that was really recent and is relevant and doesn't mislead anybody about the actual implications and the deceptions that's going on here. And we don't know all of them, but we got a really good handle on it. So it's a good spot for artists or writers, rather, or journalists, and a lot of people that are trying to source out this information for business investments and just life itself. And I can't, I have to do it myself. That's my little contribution. Whether it does that or achieves anything, we'll never know, I guess, in that sense. I think it does. But I'm going to do it every all the time because, you know, I wish I had that opportunity when I was waking up. Um, you know, I played guitar originally for ten years. Nobody taught me nothing. No one, no one to teach me nothing. No one to show me nothing. Not like today where you got the internet. And I done pretty good, I thought. And then I met somebody and he showed me a couple of simple little things that changed it forever for me. It just completely changed everything about that musical instrument that I had known so well for 10 years. Just, you know, some scales and some techniques, hammer-on, pull-offs, slides and bends. You know, they're just a proper introduction to them and their applications and how they link together and repeat themselves everywhere. That was a revolutionary idea for someone who never had access to that information, only a radio completely changed the game. It reinvigorated something I had no concept that I had. Well, I've been at this a long time, right? Even though I haven't been doing these live streams for a long time. I have done live streams five and six years ago repeatedly. I was doing like four or five hours a day. It was ridiculous some of the stuff I was up to. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered all those days that time. I was pretty shocking. <laughs> I always figured I never got arrested for that shit. I'll never get arrested. <laughs> no matter whatever. I couldn't possibly be any worse than what I was back in the old days. <laughs> I'm actually a really nice guy, right? You have no idea what I used to be like. Really? Just look what we're doing here tonight. <laughs> I gotta dig up some of that stuff and post it up on my site. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> that was a hard case. I got no shame though. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of nothing. <laughs> so that's the whole point. I got nothing to hide away from. In fact, quite uncontrary. You know, they got a lot to hide from. Tepco's insane. It's murdering everybody or Japan government or the military industrial complex or General Electric or whoever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. Oh, we do for a little bit there. Whatever you want to call it. Look at the carnage that we uncovered over the last 90 days. Like, seriously, look at what we've done over the last... I keep saying that for a number of days now because I'm too lazy to go check. <laughs> but there's probably... Uh, just hang on a second. I've got to get my, my head working again because I'm starting to laugh to myself. <laughs> Ernie Gutterson did you catch his latest video? I'm looking at the mic again Ernie Gutterson did you catch his latest video? how's the audio coming out folks? hi Andy Beck Miss Mel give you a clown uh, I have to catch Miss Milky's comment after that just got whizzed down into my sight hi DZ hi Joyce I put joy down when I said hi earlier. That was my mistake. Sorry. Hi, Lizard. Sergeant. I'm just doing an uh, audio check. Hi, Flea Beef. You got a twisted <laughs> little name to say there. Hi, Sydney. Annie Beck. Uh, how's the audio check on? You know, one, two, and three are melted down. There are one, 
or three times the size of Chernobyl. Chernobyl was only a hundred percent or thirty percent meltdown. Fukushima was three one hundred percent meltdowns. There's missing pools. Each pool has one hundred and twenty two thousand rods in it. Unifor caught fire twice, but it blew up before that. Uno one melted down in fifty five minutes after the cooling went down. Every time you hear the words iodine one thirty one, remember can't exist without iodine one twenty nine. <laughs> iodine one thirty one got a has a seven day half life times ten. It turns into iodine one thirty two. It's nine times more absorbed easily or more effectively and, and ionizes your thyroid nine times more effective. But anyway. You can't have iodine-131 or strontium without, you know, the cesium without 30 times the strontium. You can't have iodine without the 129 with a 15 million year half-life. You can't have any 132. And you can't have iodine-131 without uranium and plutonium. Fucking heavy shit, I know. Sounds good. Anybody? Let me come over and check. I asked, good, 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 loud and clear, good, tree, 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 Candace, Atom, Nightwave, Seedman, good stuff, folks. How the hell did that get past me that time? Because I got my head down. Yeah. Good audio, good stuff. Um, Very good, very good. So I got lower quality, but we're getting away with it. I'll analyze it after. <clears throat> but I want to do that before I went down this rabbit hole here. Because TEPCO is really getting under my skin with the mass murder routine. Like, at least stop mass murdering everybody. I mean, just because you're getting away with murder in the ocean doesn't mean you get, should be allowed to get away with murdering everybody. Well, because you're a corporation. That's why I say we got to hang you, because uh, as a corporation, the system won't hang you. But as a criminal against our planet and our loved ones... Our communities and our ocean and the defenseless whales and fish and everything else you just mass murdered. It doesn't stand a time test. You can't turn it off. We're at war with this planet for 4.5 billion years. And then some. Because it's Japan. Fuck Japan. Fuck, fuck Abe. I cut his fucking ears off if he ever got close to him. I don't give a fuck fucking freak the whole international community should be in there these fuckers are terrorists they're fucking terrorists okay Japan's a fucking terrorist the government they're terrorizing their own citizens just like Canadian government just like the American government they all fucking dropped the ball I shouldn't yell they all dropped the ball every bloody one of them it's ridiculous it's ridiculous they never warned anybody. All the kids walking to school, they kept their fucking mouth shut. Even their own family members. Even their own members of their own fucking family. Because they think they're, they're in a position of power right now. And that they can make those decisions. Why don't they have the debate with the rest of Canada? Why don't they debate it with the rest of Canada today or tomorrow? Oh, by the way, you know, we thought it was in, our, in your best interest. We don't tell you about the fucking radiation clouds coming through your communities. You get some shot in the head, you said that in front of me to my face. Because that's what you get. I don't give a fuck who you are, how fucking expensive your suit is, or how many piglets are fucking behind you. They're all going to die too because of you. I don't think they give a fuck. You're sat in front of me and you said something like that because you thought it was in my best interest. <laughs> That'll be the last time you said anything for a while. Because I wouldn't stop there. You're not just getting one shot. Say that to me. You don't make those decisions. We elected you, appointed you, and paid your fucking checks every month, every week, every day with your free cars and free airplanes. We pay for that, fuckers. And a handful of you fuckers out there made a decision, but the rest of you obeyed it. Not one of you out there. Cowards. Thinking you're going to get a paycheck for another couple of years before it all falls to shit. 
Because that's all you're going to get out of it. You ain't going to get no pensions. You ain't going to get any fucking peace when people find out what you've done. How you poison everybody. i got to stop yelling. I'm so pissed off with these people. These terrorists. These are fucking terrorists. I'm lost to them. These are terrorists. That's what they've done to us. We've been at this for 90 days, so when I say it, it's hard to hold the anger back. Because one hour a night for 90 days or so, with all these headlines, endless headlines, tonight's a little different because we're off to a screaming match with myself. Um, Ken Calderia, C A L D E I. R.A. Ken, climate scientist at Kearney Institute, Department of Global Ecology at Stanford University. Don't think I wouldn't give that a shot in the head if I was able to see it and recognize it. What a monster. What a freak of nature. What a creature. His concept is, oh, we can't throw the bathwater out just because we had a little accident. Throw the baby out with the bathwater because we had a little accident. I think you should drink some of that uh, 20 million Becquerel California per liter rainwater. Let them take a few showers in that. Let them go tell all the kids in California how nice that is for them. You know? They should lock him up in a cage in the funeral homes in the near future, and you can see as an um, increase of cancer deaths are coming in, the families are traumatized, and they can throw uh, apples and eggs at his head all day. That's what they're worth. They're worthless. They're not human. These people are not human. They know better. They know what's going on. They know what's happening. They, they always try to knock it down. Oh, iodine's only got a seven-day half-life. They never even mention the part that it decays into another radioactive isotope. But they never mention the fact that iodine doesn't run a reactor. It's uranium and plutonium. And because of that, they know better. They're not stupid. They're the professors at the institutions. But when they get in the media, they always talk about iodine 131. Like if I was in the audience and they'd done that, I'd pick the chair up and knock it off the size of his head. That's me. I'm a violent fucker when I think about these fuckers. There's no doubt about it. I can't contain it anymore. They murdered everything in our countries, and then they colluded to hide it. And what they can't murder, because I'm talking about murder, people don't know any better. At least we got an opportunity, because we know about nutrition. We know about GMO. How you can't uptake any nutrition if you're eating GMO. How imagine, unimaginable is that? That instead of uh, engineering more calcium, more potassium, more magnesium, more iron, into the product, they took it all out. And then they put in carcinogens like glossophates, which of course uh, makes cancer cells, tumor cells grow. And then they feed sugar to you and everything out there, which is GMO sugar, which is designed once again to feed the cancer. It's the most hideous society we can imagine of monsters that have bought into this paradigm. And, you know, you say, I say I'm fucking violent when I think about these fuckers. Look what they're doing to us. Look what they're doing to the planet. Look what they're doing to the biosphere. Look what they're doing for a paycheck. What a strange creature. With no morals whatsoever. No ethics whatsoever. Just all about monies. And all about an agenda fitting in to that agenda. Born and raised for it. You know? Cold out of the universities, but a wicked lobbyist that are appointed as professors. Every bloody nuclear scientist out there is pro nuclear. They can't change that habit, it's ingrained to them with their education. They can't escape that. They're most comfortable in that world. They worked hard to get where they're to. And they ain't going to let a few million dead here and a few million dead deer slow things down, even if it is their own loved ones, including themselves. Most of these people haven't got the brains of a shoelace. 
in the real world. They can't articulate, they can't associate with their own pets. That's how distant they are from reality. They can't bond with anybody at all. Only the, the people that they work with, because that's the only ones they trust. But they don't even trust each other. It's a, it's a sick and demented world that, you know, it's this whole thing that TEPCO in Japan doesn't get called out by you know, at least half the planet because the, the deception is so well, because they're so, so, so you know, it's the military industrial machine itself. You can't stop that is how everybody seems to feel. We can't slow it down. The terrorists might get us. Iran might get us with 49 bases around it. 49 military bases around Iran and they're the threat in all the media. Not Fukushima. Eh? They know that though. Literally everybody in the newscast, and ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, BBC, ABC, CBC, everybody that's on air knows the things I'm talking about tonight. Or highly suspects the things I'm talking about here tonight. Most likely are well aware of everything I'm saying. And yet they get up and they read the teleprompter and they sell it and they justify it because they got what they considered their perfect job. They probably murdered somebody to get that job. They no, they no doubt harmed many to get that job. They destroyed lives to get those jobs. Every one of them, that's a fact. You can't get that job without going down that route. It's a... Uh, I mean, it's a cutthroat industry, unimaginably. It's a um, ray op track. So, Ken Calderia, with the Kearney Institute, Department of Global Ecology at Stanford, the facts about the objective risks are also fairly well established. Nuclear power seems far less risky than coal. Nuclear power makes up about 4% of the power on the planet. The solar power in Germany alone in the midday sun produces more power than 20 nuclear power plants running at peak. Right? But he's got to always throw coal out there. There's 9,000 square miles in one part of Russia alone. You can go with all the coal you want. But it's radioactive. And you're not allowed to be there anyway. Because of radiation. Coal, burning coal, a coal accident... Doesn't mean you got to close down 9,000 square miles and close down 7,500 communities and leave all the pets behind and all the graveyards and history behind. It doesn't kill oceans. And there's a lot on the planet. But, I mean, we got the technology, 4,800 peer review academic studies every day that if we put that to work to solve any of our problems, we wouldn't have those problems. But the nuclear one is an emergency. It's vital. The Philippines just got annihilated, I shouldn't use that word, I guess, but destroyed uh, 44 provinces. The air was projectiles, 195 mile an hour winds. A father on TV talking about how his three daughters got pulled out of his arms, up in the air, never to be seen. He found two of them, their dead bodies, mangled bodies. But they were they were hammered with projectiles. Every building there was destroyed with projectiles. It was a hundred mile wide F four tornado. And TEPCO and Japan had an opportunity to stop, to allow other countries to come to the rescue to come deal with that. And they even today they keep everybody out. They haven't got the money to do the job. Is there keep excuses? And the whole world wants to get the job done, but they won't. They're too busy coming up with technology to imprison you, enslave you, entrap you, manipulate you, brainwash you on a scale unimaginable. But you get people from Carnegie Mellon University and they, they want to compare it to coal and not, and not talk about the carnage, the fucking carnage from just Japan. Not mention all the other nuclear stuff on the planet. I can go down that road. 
global public sentiment is still vehemently anti-nuclear. This is a report, extreme public resistance, Japan, Italy, Germany, Belgium, Switzerland. And so they got to own the universities. they got to own the media. The population doesn't want nothing to do with it. Their job is to sell it. They're the PR, the other side of the PR that we never covered last night. These are traitors because they know better. These are traitors because they understand what's happening. These are, are sick, demented, path pathological mass murderers that are enjoying this. That don't have any kind of remorse in their body. They truly don't. They keep telling the same lies every day about bananas and natural radiation in the ocean. Never bringing in the 234 and the 235 uraniums, plutoniums and neptuniums, the americaniums, and the, the massive amount of isotopes that comes out of that ocean or, uh, that are transported by clouds, let alone the ocean, that are transported through the jet streams into the upper tropospheres and stratospheres where it rains out for the next 10 years. That's, and they don't ever try to identify with that. They don't ever try to warn people to think about that. They don't ever put that into the equation. They just throw in the words coal. You know, there's 90,000 container ships on the ocean. One ship burns the same amount of fuel as 50,000 cars. It's bunker fuel. It's supposed to be on a toxic waste site. Instead, they burn it in ships. There's 90,000 of these ships out there. 16 of them burns more, creates more pollution than all the automobiles on the planet. 16 ships. There's 90,000 of them on the planet, on the ocean, any given day. There's 42 trillion people on this planet every day in automobiles. 42 trillion. Not billion. 42 trillion worth of automobiles on this planet every day. And I've got the studies here about how that gets carried up into the atmosphere and hangs up there for like 10 years. And they're actually larger particles by far than the one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter uh, uranium urethal uh, sulfurical balls that are created when they spray salt water on the reactors and they become a transport and an unsalutable transport for uranium and plutoniums and strontiums included that are ingested inside of these. And there's a peer review study about that down below. It's an, it's an extraordinary phenomenon. Screaming. So we snoozing. This story here, radioactive rain over the Pacific will save lives. Radioactive rain over the Pacific will save lives. Global consequences of Japanese quake. And so they were talking about Japan's neighbors are worried that the radioactive clouds released by the explosions at the Fukushima nuclear power plant could reach their territories. In the best case scenario, they say, the clouds will be blown out over the Pacific Ocean where chemical reagents, R-E-A-G-E-N-T-S, could be used to force the radioactive particles to fall to the ocean in the rain. Uh, that was March the 18th, 10 days after. March the 18th, 10 days after. They're talking about going out in cloud seeding to knock the, camp, knock the, you know, the, the radioactive fallout out of the skies. They've done that in Chernobyl. They, done, they do that at all nuclear accidents. All countries on the planet chemtrail and aggr aggregates to latch on to the radiation and weigh it down. Right? And so that could be one of the reasons they got those 90,000 ships that are producing the same much, amount of pollution as 42 trillion people on this planet every day burning toxic waste, toxic uh, bunker fuel which is left over from, from the production of uh, petroleum products and is considered so toxic to put it on a, at $1,800 a ton on toxic waste sites. But big ships on the ocean burn that. And so a lot of that has gone up into the troposphere and the ionospheres where it might take 10 years for it to come back down. And so theoretically speaking, that would aggregate with radiation. 
um, and then the ocean become massification from all of that, and they hide it all under global warming, and but th that to me makes sense. They've been doing this because they've been releasing so much radiation on this planet. They they want to slow it down for it to be mass cancer, and people will lose their minds, and someone will work it out. But Fukushima accelerated all that radiation on an astronomical scale. I mean, what they done in in Iraq, what they done off San Francisco. 45,000 45 gallon drums. Iraq was 5.5 million bullets a month. And half of that was depleted uranium rounds, dirty bombs. They're dirty bombs. And then you had Russia sunk all kinds of subs and ships. You had Italy. Uh, you had uh, off Somalia where you can't even fish. And so now they turned to pirates because the Italy and other countries went over there and dumped their toxic waste just off the coastline on purpose. That's why Somalia is the way it is now. And they, they got rid of the government, got rid of their industries, and then left them to fight among each other. Uh, then you have just unbelievable amounts coming out of Sellafield, England. Eight million liters a day for uh, two million gallons a day hemorrhaging into that ocean. But not over three melted, not three melted cores like Fukushima. Not with all those uh, detonations. They didn't have that at Sellafield that we know about. They had issues, yes, serious issues. But it's not like, um, it's not like Japan. That's hell on earth. They were using MOX fuel, number three. It's, and the MOX fuel is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Two million times worse. So that's like 18 million Chernobyls. And that was aerosoled and blown up into the atmosphere and carried over in the jet streams. And 48 hours it was here. 72 hours later, it was everywhere. 40 days later, it circled the entire northern hemisphere. And it rains. It'll continue to rain out. And because TEPCO hid this away, hid it away the way the fact that it was happening they colluded. All of our governments colluded. If you went back to Freedom of Information, you would find every government out there uh, colluded to hide all of this. Our own local governments collude. They took away all the censors. They uh, try to criminalize everybody that asks us questions. But now they can't control it no more. Now there's too many. Now they can't contain it. And now when people lose it, there's 300 million handguns in America versus what? People that uh, know better. And maybe the TSA might stand up. Homeland Security, 65,000 against 300 million armed crazies. That's, forget about it. There will be no order. There will be no drudge dreads in the future, okay? That's, a, that's nonsense. That's the fable to try to keep the police on their side in the future, that's not going to work. Police are going to take steel shit and go off with their own families too in the future. If this goes the wrong way, and it's going to go the wrong way, because they're going about it the wrong way. They really so much, everybody got doses at the same time on this northern hemisphere anyway, if you can believe the models. And there's a lot of them, and I got a lot of them, I covered them over and over and over for 90 days straight. Mr. Maybe a day or two days, but that's about it. But we have so many universities, so many institutions uh, that we could put to work. There's 4,800 studies that are published each day. That means 4,800 professors and students and institutions that you pay for are good to go. Could solve all kinds of uh, issues. They can put nutrition back into the food. That way the, the cancer doesn't uh, get a good grip on you. Everybody can get the, the government can hand out DCA. And anybody that got cancer is now will get a second leash on life. And maybe have a bit of fate back into their government. It's really that simple. But instead they engineered all the nutrition out of your food. Every bit of it. They never left nothing. It's like eating cardboard. Dipped in formaldehyde. When you go to the supermarket, if it looks like you should take a picture of it, it's GMO. 85% of everything in the supermarkets and the corner shops and 100% of everything you give your kid in the candy sections is GMO. It has no nutrients, but it has toxins. 
You're doing the opposite of what you're supposed to do as a parent or as a human or as uh, and how that you know permeates throughout the biosphere itself because everybody's consuming it and putting it into the water and putting it into the aquifers through the bodily fluids even you know like people that eat so much GMO their spit you know when it lands on the ground of insects it can contaminate that little tiny habitat that little micro sphere of life by doing that Certainly by peeing on bushes, if you're eating GMO all the time, is you're really, you're changing uh, the bush, you're passing that on. These genes, right, this toxin, uh, it's kind of like uh, isotopes in one way. Like formaldehydes don't, they don't, they keep showing back up residually, but they, they're cumulative. Just like the rainfall, the radioactive rainfall we covered a couple of nights ago. Endless rain right across the country. Always iodine 131. But you can't have iodine 131 without cesium. But you can't have cesium without strontium. 30 times more strontium, which is way more worse. 90, strontium 90 gets right into your muscles, right into your bones. And you can't have that without uranium and plutonium, which are extremely heavy beaters in your body, they sequester in your body and they're just pulsing at a, at a, a massive amount, you know, hundreds. And our whole atmosphere was polluted with this and they never told us when it was coming through to get out of the way. And they're not going to hand out DCA, which has no patent on it, which has been proven repeatedly over and over and there's a link below to the peer review studies and how just one organic corn on the cob, you would need 428 GMO corn on the cob to get the same amount of calcium out of a single organic corn on the cob. And how all your supplements and nutritions, right? And then you got TEPCO doing what it's doing to you. You got the whole system against you anyway, and then you got TEPCO now destroying everything else left. And well, this is Japan's government. It's monsters. Then you got all the universities and institutions and all the PR firms out there knowing what's going on and trying to cover it up. Always trying to marginalize us or minimize anybody or anything about it. And just talk about bananas. Talk about walking down the streets instead of uranium-234, 235. But 90 days of reading the headlines, 90 days of talking about this, 90 days, and I spent all day searching all night. This is my stream. This is what I do. I put a little stream. Anybody wants to join it, they're welcome to join it. More than welcome. But it's my stream. And the idea is, I'm just, I'm nobody, but I'm just putting out what I researched. And I, I, I could do this five times a day. But I decide I'll do it once a night. Or maybe I'll do it more. I don't know. We'll see. But the whole point is, you, nobody can deny it. And so nobody wants to try to fix it. I can't fix it, but I can tell people what's going on and what the solutions basically are. Is we put all the universities to work to solve the problem. We put the other institutions to peer review those solutions. That's how we deal with it anyway, isn't it? We take robotics without electronics and we use joysticks from a mile away, 10 miles away. The other side of the planet. We can do it with drones and blimps. And we go in and we clean up the site and we put it in sarcophagus. But we need to get all the universities to make the stuff because they never bothered trying to do that yet. They like dump it in the ocean and in online pits. Even though the regulatory agency says they're going to put it in the sarcophagus, people of the world, don't worry, we're watching. There's no such thing as sarcophagus, sarcophagus that can contain it. There is nothing for con contain it for billions of years or millions of years. And so they use technology they can't contain. They introduce something into our atmosphere, our environment, and into our very homes now. And then they want to hide away and pretend it's not happening. 
and pretend that you don't have to visit your loved ones in the near future is not going to happen. They can't hide what happened to the Philippines anymore, but they managed to hide what happened to Tonga. That's how desperate they are at this stage. The Philippines, they went and changed their Wikipedia page 255 miles per hour winds. But we've all seen the videos, you can check it below. Philippines, carnage. 195 mile an hour winds, sustained. So why did they go change it on their Wikipedia page? Why? Why does uh, Fukushima's wiki page update every 20 minutes or so? Just endless lies and taking information away, and bringing the numbers down, and then the people that are going out looking are supposed to be able to trust someone like Wikipedia or someone like the big media. They just keep cannibalizing the numbers. But when you come out, the real numbers are always there, if you actually know how to look, but most people don't. And so I aggregate it, and I share it each night. And sometimes I get pretty darn mean. I can get pretty cranky, too. And I can be pretty funny. But I'm sick of it. I'm so sick of it that I, I have to come here each night and share what I found today, because that's what I've done all day. I looked. Some nights you don't get through it all. But They're talking about seven days after... Radioactive rain over the Pacific will save lives. I don't agree with a lot of things they're saying. They're, they even say there, it's no big deal because there's iodine 131 going in the ocean and it only has a half life of seven days. And so that pisses me off when I read that. You know, that pisses me off. Because it's times 10 for starters, so it's 70 days. And, and they don't bother mentioning that the 132 or the 129 actually can't take, you can't have 131 without 129. It decays into 132, but alongside of it, there's three 131s and then a 129. Three 131s, 129. That don't go away for 15 million years. You can't have any of them without uranium plutonium. And I'm so sick of every day reading these articles where the people we go to trust, the people that are, we're supposed to trust, like from Carnegie Mellon, or Stanford, or Oxford, or Yale, or Berkeley, or Harvard, or MIT, or any of the Commonwealth, uh, will do that trick. Where do you equate it with banana? Uranium-234. They'll equate background radiation of sunshine with uranium-235. They'll equate the natural indigenous uranium that's in the ocean with uranium-238. By saying those words, right? By using that in the same context or equating that. But it's completely lie. It's a total lie. If I had a piece of uranium-234, 235, 238, right here, it would kill me, the size of a banana. It would kill me. If it was in your home, it would kill everybody in your home right away. You wouldn't last jig. A couple of seconds. Maybe, a, you know, a minute crawling away. But your organs all melted right away from the x-rays and the neutrons. It's such a powerful thing. It'll never lose its power. So if you were to pick it up and then throw it at your neighbor house, he picked it up, he threw it at his neighbor house, that can kill everybody on the planet doing that. In less than, an, you know, they'll die. Even if they only hang down to it for a few seconds, they're dead in less than an hour. But they equate bananas with the kind of stuff that's coming, that, that I'm talking about, that kind of stuff. They equate a banana with that. But if you had a piece the size of a banana... I couldn't finish that sentence. TEPCO does it. Japan's government does it. They do it to their own citizens every day. They make fun of them. They marginalize them. They call them monsters for worrying about uh, is their sick child sick or did their child die from radiation. They, they, they ridicule them. They drive them away. They take away that closure for the victims. They won't pay the bills at the hospital in Japan. You know, so the radiation, so the employees can't even go to the hospitals to get... And there was 5,000 of them in the first few months had to go to the hospital for ingesting radiation hot particles. That's a monster to do to your employees, but going down kidnapping people off the streets. And then the government turns its back, because the government's one and the same. Russia sent in 600 million people, 600,000 people. 600,000 people 
It started off, they were only allowed 15 or 20 seconds on the roof, and then they went home. Fukushima, to kidnap them off the street and leave them in there all day. Day after day, week after week. And they put, uh, you know, they just release them with no, they don't even recognize them. But they won't go do it themselves. Abe's not going to go in there and pick up a shovel. He's too important, right? He's got to create a law to hide everything, to retroactively protect him. That's anti-human. That's as far from being a human as you can get. That's a terrorist. Only a terrorist uh, can do the things that we're talking about tonight. Only a monster, a true monster, can turn their back on their loved ones, their families, their spouses, their brothers, their sisters, their aunts, their uncles, their country, for a paycheck. These are monsters. And we got to treat them like monsters, 100%. They're terrorists. They're worse than any terrorists out there. You can't possibly be any worse than what they're doing to their own families and their own communities. You can't get any eviler than that. That's as evil as you get. Where you ridicule, you marginalize everybody, you create 5,000 models of the death plumes in the first 52 days and you don't tell nobody to get out of the way. You don't tell anybody to stay indoors. You're not like Russia where they evacuate 7,500 communities permanently. Right, Tepico is not like that. Japan people are not like that. The governments, the employees, the upper management, the freaks, the creatures, the, 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 they would make a great uh, scary movie, you know, about what they're doing to people. That would be a scary movie to watch. That would be absolutely frightening. I went down the long road tonight. I went down the long road tonight because that's the way it works. 56 minutes. 56 minutes. I say goodbye to everybody. Never accomplished the stuff I wanted to. Some nights are like that. You know, these streams are just about catching people that are recently waking up and giving them a blast of reality. Most of them are not even going to understand it probably. But they know now there's a completely different narrative. Sometimes I'm on track. Sometimes I'm on point. Sometimes I miss it. No real magic. Sometimes I don't. Fan filtration. I bought Alex. What the fuck does lollipop mean, Alex? I just passing through. Newman, Anibeck, Seedman, Bob, Sarah Lee, Michael. No more magic again. I'm burnt out. Miss Milky the Clown. It's a Friday night. Sam. Sergeant. No, I rant sometimes, I know. Starlight. Kurtzer. I just say good night to everybody. I keep going. Max. Uh, David. Huma. Michael. Miss Milky the Clown again. I die, I die. I burnt out. Man, where did time go tonight, eh? Holy cow. I thought it was only going like a half an hour. Pet lover. Just passing through. Stetson. Let me see. Starlight. Uh, Rob. Roblin. 420. Standing foot. Getting most people in. Got a few more here. Hang on. I'm almost ready. Reram. Ooh. Yeah, I wonder why I don't get all the comments when I'm inside. And I don't want to open up another stream of the video. Seedman. Sydney. Pam. Uh, Missing Sky. Moya. That was a good one. Got some good names that time. Mr. Fume, as usual. I can't remember everybody. Sylvia's out there. Elizabeth's out there. Ketcher K. 
cat's alive. Should have my glasses on. That'd be a lot easier. Pam. Hi, Pam. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well, I can't keep up with it now. 59 minutes. There you go. Thanks, Jocelyn. Wickers. Thank you. Sam. Hi, Jane. Thank you. Miss Milky the Clown. Missing Sky. Mickey. Fukushima in Revelations. Fan Filtration. You bet. Sergeant York, Michael Hand, Catcher K, Sydney, everybody, Missing Sky, Pet Lovers, Alex, Lizard, Standing Food, Foot, Ken, hi Ken, missed you, Sydney, David, Sam, Michael, Wanna Be Live, 2040, there you go, missed that one, hi Cap Red, Annabeck, Citroen, Sky Watch, thank you, Nietzsche, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, James, Beck, Jane Strange, thank you again. Miss Milk of the Clown. Nuber Magic's here, folks. Go check his videos out. If this is later, you can find the links under my video. The people, the other people. Get other narratives. Some nights I get right on track. Tonight I was having a hard time again, trying to get the stream to work. And I finally lowered the, the quality and the, and the bit rates down. And I'm still not kind of happy with that. Uh, and that's probably why I acted the way that I did tonight. It was pretty frustrating. Last night for two hours... And I barely got the stream to work. And then the night before, it didn't work where it was off. Uh, it'll get better in a few weeks, though. I'm hoping anyway. I know it is, but... Keep the puppet on, guard. Yeah, I never even had time for the puppet tonight. Thanks, Aviator. There you go. I knew I missed somebody. All righties. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. <laughs> well, it probably won't be as late. We had a lot to do today, so it was a long, long day. Long, long day. Uh, a lot of new things happening, so i got to keep up on top of that, too. But Well, catch your folks tomorrow night. And uh, fuck you, Tepco, you bag of shit. You prick. You prick. I hope you get rectal cancer, you fuckers. Take care, folks. <laughs>